Well, now on our top story in Russia has opened a criminal investigation after two astronauts crash landed back on Earth after their rocket failed this morning. Just minutes after they set off, the booster rocket failed, meaning they had to make a ballistic landing, a, a sharper than usual angle of descent. The astronauts are now being checked over by medics, but officials say they appear to be in good condition. Joining us now is astronaut Per Wimmer. Hello to you, Per. Thank you for joining us. Oh, my goodness me. What must it have been like inside that capsule? Well, this is what we call a bad day uh, in the space community. It's obviously very, very stressful when, when the rockets don't, uh, don't work. So I can imagine that there must be initial panic. But what happens afterwards is the training procedures set in and, uh, and they switch over to, you know, what they prepared for, what they trained for, i.e. try to get down safe. Yeah, per, I mean, they were, they were saying, look at page 35 in the manual. You, you don't expect it to be like that, do you? You expect, I don't know, what do you expect? Well, you prepare for the worst. Uh, you hope for the best, but you prepare for the worst. I've actually done part of my space training in Russia, in Star City, exactly where uh, Alexei and Nick Haig have been training. So I've, I've actually been through part of that training through the centrifuge. They actually have the biggest centrifuge in the world, an ABB. 30G centrifuge, so pretty powerful stuff. Now, they haven't pushed up to 30G, I, I, I caution, uh, but they would have to do, as part of their uh, ballistic re-entry, they would have to do a very sharp turn, and therefore they would have been pulling quite strong Gs, certainly uh, seven Gs or more. So they would have felt it on their body, on their body but they would also have been well prepared for that when they've done their training in Star City uh, in the centrifuge. You can, in fact, in the centrifuge, do an exact preparation for a three-stage rocket, what it means, uh, how, what to expect when, the, when it decouples, etc., and also when things go wrong. So you, there is a very heavy training regime um, and what-if scenario uh, that the astronauts are being prepared for. But if you're pulling 7G, how come you don't black out? Uh, it depends on the on the body. Uh, we have different thresholds, each one of us. Um, the rule of thumb is that uh, the smaller the bo your body is, uh, the, the better it is. The more you can you can handle effectively. Once you go up past uh, 12 Gs, um, it's usually there. You start, people start dying, so you, you certainly don't want to go that that steep. But seven, eight, nine Gs are uh, it's tough, but you you survive. Some people could do blackout or what we call funky chicken. That means that you pass out for a while and then when the G-forces come up, you kind of wake up in a little bit of a frantic state. Um, but uh, you, you prepare for that as an astronaut, so you're, you're fully equipped, ready for it in the case these things happen. How long would this process have taken from them knowing that there was a, a, a real emergency to actually landing? I'm guessing it would have felt like hours. Um, it does go pretty quick when things go wrong in space. Um, the accident, if you like, uh, happened after 114 seconds uh, at a, an altitude of about 50 kilometers up. So it was relatively uh, quickly after launch that they realized the booster is not working and you immediately go into uh, emergency procedures, turn around. I mean, the, the rocket was obviously not igniting, the booster was not igniting. So the ballistic uh, trajectory uh, and, and the emergency procedure were, were implemented uh, perfectly and, and obviously there are safe and sound today. What I'd also say is uh, when it comes to the Soyuz rocket, it is actually a pretty solid workhorse in general. Uh, this has been the core part of the manned space program in Russia since the early 60s when Yuri Gagarin took off. There's been 745 Soyuz flights to date and only 21 of them have had issues uh, or, or failures. Uh, so you're talking less than 3% uh, failure rate, which is actually pretty good when it comes to space. Uh, so it's actually a very safe uh, rocket. But no doubt there'll be a big investigation into this, criminal investigations, as we have learned, um, and we'll be eager to, le to learn what was the actual cause of this accident. We certainly will, but it's interesting to talk to you. Come back and talk to us soon. That was fascinating. Thank you. Thank you. Still in the air, but a little bit.